Hello Stats fans, you've made it to video number 10, Describing Histograms. Uh, in this vid video, we're going to describe uh, or learn how to describe distributions of quantitative variables uh, when they're given in a histogram, and the same kind of descriptions apply when you're given a box plot or dot plot, which we'll be studying soon. Then we're going to review how to create a histogram on your calculator and go through an example of that. Let's go ahead and get started. I have in the first slide here, uh, three histograms picture. And we're going to talk about what it means to be skewed to the left, skewed to the right, and symmetrical. So we're talking about shape. This first graph here, you can see that it's kind of stretched out to the left. This is called a tail here. And this tail, the left tail, is really stretched out. So that's called skewed left. Okay. On the second example, we have it going kind of the other way. This dis distribution really stretches out to the right. So the direction in which is kind of stretched out, we call that skewed, and this time skewed to the right. Stretched out to the right. This graph here is called symmetrical. And geometry, for something to be symmetrical, the left side has to be the exact mirror image of the right side. In stats, it doesn't have to be uh, exact. The left side is pretty close to being to the right, uh, same as the right side. So we call that symmetrical. This is kind of the line of symmetry here, and it's pretty close on both sides. So we can describe a distribution as skewed to the left, skewed to the right, or symmetrical. And I want to tell you from uh, up front, some distri distributions are kind of hard to describe, so we do the best we can. Okay, here we go. Here are six examples. And to make things quicker, I'm going to abbreviate a little bit. This uh, uh, first uh, histogram here, fairly symmetrical. It's not perfect on both sides. Like this bar is higher than that bar, but it's fairly close. So describe that as symmetrical. Our second example, it stretches out to the right. If we kind of trace the outline, we can see that there's, there's a long tail here on the right side. So I'm going to abbreviate abbreviate that SR. When you're doing your work though, please write it out skewed to the right. Third example, this graph is uh, symmetrical. Fairly same on both sides. We could draw the outline if you want. There, oops, that's pretty good. Kind of hard to do with this pen, but fairly symmetrical. Uh, our fourth example down here, the gold one, we see that it's stretched out to the right. So this is called skewed to the right. This graph right here is a little bit different, but it's symmetrical. The left side kind of matches the right side. So I'm going to label it SYM for symmetrical. And our final example is stretched out to the left. This tail on the left is, is continuing on much further than the tail on the right. So this is called skewed to the left. We're going to label it that way. Okay, so those were discussions about shape. We can say a little bit more about shape. So we're going to add a unimodal, bimodal, multimodal, or uniform to the words we have to describe shape. So this first graph is would be called unimodal. A mode is a peak, or actually the mode is where you know the the data value that occurs most often happens, which means if you graph it, it'd be a peak there. So this peak here is kind of where the mode is, and there's only one of them. So this is called unimodal, uni for one, one mode or one peak, unimodal. The second one, two clear peaks. So this is called bimodal, which you could think of as two peaks. And they should be kind of really clear that they're, they're peaks, not just a little bump uh, along the histogram, but two main peaks. Usually that represents two groups of students. So this graph was highest of students. One group might be males, one group might be females. All right, down here, if it has, whoops, if it has uh, more than two modes, we just call it multimodal. So they already have the word there, so I'm just going to circle it. This has three peaks, but just anything beyond two, multimodal. So here's a peak, there is a peak, and there is a peak, three clear peaks. This final example is an example of a uniform distribution. Um, it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close to being same across all the categories. 
So all these categories are approximately 100. So we would say this last one is an example of a uniform distribution. Okay, there's just uh, two more things we got to add to how we describe shape. So we have all this stuff so far, and now we want to add outliers and gaps. An outlier is an unusual value. So it lies outside the rest of the data. On this uh, nice green uh, histogram, this value over here would be considered an outlier because it's very far from the rest of the data. Most of the data is over here, like in between 0 and 75 apparently, or even 0 and 150. This value is very extreme. These values here, they might be outliers, um, but certainly the one on the right is. Now, we're going to come up with a set rule to determine whether a data value is an outlier or not. So, you got to be patient. Right now, if it just looks unusual, we're going to comment on it and say there might be an outlier at a certain place. On the graph on the right, this would be an outlier. This would be an unusually low values. All right, and this space, it looks like missing teeth in the middle, where there's no, uh, no data fell into those bends. This is called a gap. Okay, so there was a gap over, a big gap over here too, uh, going up to that outlier. That was a gap, and I guess there was a little one here. It's missing a couple. It seems kind of significant. All right, so we learned about outliers and gaps. All of these are words we use to describe the shape of a histogram. Okay, I want to look at an example, and we're going to talk about a couple of other things. In this example, uh, we're going to talk about shape, center, spread, and unusual features. These four things, so they're listed up here, are what's expected when you describe a distribution, whether it's a histogram, box plot, or a dot plot. They're looking for these four things, and we got to get very familiar with them. On an AP test, they, they probably won't spell it out, you know, describe these four things. When they say describe the distribution, you just got to know that's what they're looking for. All right, shape we've talked about in the previous slides. The shape is unimodal. There's one major peak here, and it's skewed to the left. It's stretched out to the left. That would be uh, the way to describe the shape. So we did that. The center, the center for right now, we're going to take as a typical value. I think this would be 60 here. I picked a value that was just in between these two large bends here. Okay, so the center, a typical value is where most of the values lie. And a lot of the values lie here. We're going to get more precise later because we're going to talk about median and mean as a measure of center. But for right now, just give me a typical value. If you said 60, I wouldn't have argued. So somewhere, some value where a lot of the data values are. Okay, spread. Here too, some flexibility. We're going to get more precise about this soon, but I just said that most values lie in between 42, which is right here, and 62, which is right here. So in between these values right here, I said most of the data lies. And that's kind of true. You could have also said 38 to 60 or something like that. But just pick two values where most of the graph lies in between. And that's a measure of how spread out the data is. All right. And finally, we want to talk about are there any gaps or outliers, especially outliers we want to mention. In this graph, I don't see any very unusual values that are off by their own. And I don't see any gaps in the data either. So there, there were no gaps and no outliers. Okay, we're going to practice this a, a few times. We'll be doing this. A this graph is uh, clearly bimodal. It has two major peaks. And when it's bimodal, we should describe where the peaks are, uh, approximately where the peaks are at. So I said a peak at about 5. And that's right here. That's in between these two bars where a lot of the data is. And at about 8, that's about where this peak is right here. So it doesn't have one center, it's bimodal, it has kind of two peaks, so I describe where both of them are. Spread, most of the values are in between 4 and 9, you could have said all of the values are in between 4 and 10, and no gaps or outliers in this graph. So we took care of the description. I have one more example like this. So this, this graph is unimodal. There's one huge peak here at the left. 
almost all the data is in between 0 and 12.5. This value right here is 12.5, halfway in between 0 and 25. So it's unimodal, skewed to the right. That's the shape of this graph. The center, I said about 6 or 7. Why about 6 or 7? Because that's the middle of this first peak. A lot of the data is in this, lies in this first bend. So I just picked a value in the middle of the bend. Okay, so a lot of data is in between 0 and 12.5. So halfway is about 6 or 7. Uh, spread. Uh, most values lie in between 0 and 62.5. That's where this bend ends right there. So that's a description of spread. And I said there are two gaps and two outliers. Here's an outlier. And here's an outlier. And the gaps are the spaces in between them. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a really good idea of how to describe. And in, in our next class, you'll be uh, uh, ready for this. I want to go through uh, a quick example of how to get a histogram from your calculator. So I have my super duper uh, digital calculator here. We're going to enter this uh, group of data into list one and uh, get a histogram for it. So if you need to pause the video, grab your calculator and enter the data and follow along, I'll go ahead and do that. I already have the data entered in this calculator. So remember, press Stat and Edit. You want to clear List 1 and then enter the data in List 1. So at the same time, I have all the data listed in L1 already. If you're still working on that, just pause the video. All right, I'm going to press Second and Stat Plot to get a graph. And I'm going to press 1. We want to use stat plot 1. Make sure it's on. And make sure you have histogram selected so you can move the cursor down to uh, where it says histogram. Although it's probably still on that from class. We're graphing data in list 1. So L1 it should be the X list. And the frequency should be 1. That means each data value is counted once, which is what we want. All right, we're going to get a great first graph by pressing zoom, then 9. And if you hit trace, uh, it's labeled. All right, so this tells me that the first bend goes from 22 to 35.8. And there are two data values in there. And the second bend goes from 35.8 to 49.6. And there are eight values in there. I don't like what it's going up by. So I'm going to press window. I'm fine with it starting at 22. That's what X min is. But X scale is what it's going up by. And 13.8 just seems kind of uh, unusual. Or I don't like that too much. So let's just round it to 14. So now my graph is going to start at 22. The bend width is 14. And let's see what we get. Just press graph. And there we go. And trace. And we see that that's much better. The first spin starts at 22 and goes up to 36, and there are two uh, data values in it. So our job is just to kind of copy this graph like that. Okay, so I finished the graph. Hopefully your graph looks like this one. If you got that, that's what you're looking at, that basic shape, you did a great job. I have one last point I want to make, and uh, I have a little... Uh, at, uh, app here that shows this. This is the same uh, histogram that we just generated in our calculator. Now, it, uh, the basic shape should look the same. The grid's a little bit different, so if it looks more spread out or chunkier, that's why. But it's the same graph. I want to show you what happens when you change the width of the bends and um, how many bends there are. That really changes the look of the graph a lot. And just so you know that, it's the same data. But if you set up the histogram differently, the look changes. So if we use a lot of bends, the graph gets very jagged, kind of like you can see here. This is too jagged. This wouldn't be a good histogram. If we go to the other extreme and don't use enough bends, we get these really fat bars. And it's kind of hard to tell precisely where the peak is and what's happening in the graph. So we want something kind of in the middle, which is what our calculator gave us. So what I want you to do in your journal is describe these two uh, distributions. Make sure you comment on the shape, center, spread, and unusual values for both. Good luck. Take care.